Hello everybody, Sibley Monitor here, and today I'm going to be showing you, this is episode one of my new series that I'm going to have, it's going to have a few videos, not too many, it's of me playing Towns, it's not a let's play, it's going to be a tutorial series, and this is, obviously by the title of the video, the very basics. So first of all, when you start up Towns, you want to click new game, uh, you want to choose the maps, don't ever choose the tutorial, because the tutorial stinks. Uh, if you're a beginning, you you can choose any of these, but I rec highly recommend the normal map. You um, uh, usually you can choose to use local buried towns or don't use buried towns. I find not much difference, so you can go ahead and just choose do not use buried towns, especially since you've just begun, so you have no buried towns. You just have a name. I'm gonna call mine tutorial, and. Right off the bat, as soon as it uh, finishes generating, you want to click the space bar. That pauses the game. Let me pause the game. There, and now we can look around. This right here is the mini map. This, I'll go through the controls in a second. This button right here flattens blocks near the cursor, which is, as you can see, as my cursor moves towards these trees and this wild wheat, it'll flatten it. That is, it's, it's useful, but it can get some kind of annoying, so you can disable that, so now nothing goes away. I kind of like it, kind of don't. Grid key, I don't really ever use. You can use it if you're doing a complicated build project and you just don't want to mess up. Uh, I don't like using it all that much. This flatten blocks, flattens all the blocks. I don't, I don't like that at all, hardly. 3D mouse key, uh shows uh, like how many levels high you are. I almost forgot what I did there for a second. But uh, settings, obviously you can save, save and quit, buried town, just quit. Options, the options button has graphics, audio, game, and performance. You can mess around with those, but I like using the default. It's my favorite. Now, to start off, those are the, the basic controls is W, A, S, and D, move the screen around, move your view around. You can also, if you're playing in full screen, just go to the edge of the screen, but I'm playing on two monitors, so I can't, I'm moving in between screens right now, so I like using W, A, S, and D. Use the scroll wheel to move up levels and move down levels and such. Um, that's pretty much the basic controls. You'll get the hang of it more. These right here, you can move between your citizens and if you click on this button right here it'll show all of your citizens give you some options I'll explain in a later video uh, you can choose next citizen which will bring it you to uh, the next citizen in the line I do believe it is I, I'm not sure you can go previous citizen stuff like that and also that's key E to go to next citizen and key R not, not Q uh, it's key R to go to previous citizen that's really weird opposite kind of these are soldiers I'll talk about soldiers in a later video heroes I'll also talk about trading and stuff I'll talk about in another video uh, but you'll notice that there are these right off the bat you'll notice that there are these gray blocks that say unknown that's because it's a mountain <laughs> you want to kind of find a flat area of land away from this this right here is the jungle there are lots of enemies in there so you do not want to go anywhere near there uh, this is probably too close, though this is a really good area. I really like that area. This up here looks like a good area. This right here. Yeah, yeah. First off, you want to find a good flat area away from the jungle. And these are the menus. I'll talk about each of those respectively. But right now, here's this menu. This menu you can harvest. Harvesting, is, this is blanket harvesting. I'll harvest any items that I can harvest, which is this wild wheat. Wild sugar can, you'll harvest everything that you can harvest within the little cursor. And you can hold shift to uh, give multiple orders or just let go of shift and see, I can't do it anymore. But right now, I want to cancel order with this. Just blank cancel. Cancel all of that. This is the chop key, which is the first command you'll probably ever give in the game. You want to clear out a good, decent area with the chop key. It'll chop down all the trees and clear your space and get you some wood. Again, with the shift key, you can give out multiple orders to give more specific. Cut. Cut is like getting rid of. See, I can right-click this and cut pine tree bush. It won't drop any items. It'll just get rid of it. That's for, like, clearing an area. You can also cut 
wild bamboo. You can cut wild wheat. That's for getting stuff out of your way if you don't want it there. But right now, don't cut anything. You can dig, which is like you'll dig the level below. Let's see, if I give a command like this, I'll dig out all this grass, and then this level right here will be uh, visible. But right now, you, you shouldn't want to dig. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, if you give a dig order, you have to go out one below to cancel it. That's annoying. They should change that. But now the mining key, you want to also, probably right off the bat, uh, find a good quarry. Always, before you, before you start mining down any stone, scroll up as much as you can to see how many, how tall it gets, because you don't want to leave rocks hanging in the middle of the air. Then go scroll down slowly until it sort of lights up a little bit. Then you can select them, go down a level, select them, and do stuff like that. See? Now, my citizens will come over here. They will... I should probably mine that out, but oh well. They'll come over here. They'll chop down these trees, and then they'll mine out all these all these blocks If whenever I click spacebar. But before I click spacebar, I kind of want... If you can, if there's enough room, you should go ahead and... And go into here, click zones, click carpentry, and drag out a three by, oh, I got a text, three by three area. Then, after that, go ahead and do the same with the masonry. Those are both uh, key areas that you really want to have down right off the bat. Now, I will fast forward through this part where my citizens will come and chop down all of this and mine out the rocks. Explain this right here. This is a tree keeper. It's a mob that will probably kill this guy. Yeah, there he is. He's dead. Uh, sadly, very sadly, but probably gonna kill her too. Dang it. Let's see if we can't get somebody to help. Gah. Leave my people alone, stupid tree guy. He should he should die this time. It really stinks. Most of the time, whenever you give an order your people will probably team up on the treant, most likely, if they're not away from other people. Now that I have all this, I wanna go into this bottom menu right here, click stockpiles, choose raw materials, which is this block over here, and drag out a decent sized space. Now, uh, right click, go down to manage stockpile, click materials, and select wood, and stone that'll enable uh, your people to move all of the stone and wood that they just mined and that's not gonna be a big enough area for all that stone but it might be they'll move all of it to this little space that's good for uh, organizing stuff though not as good as barrels but barrels are a kind of later game item that you'll use as soon as you set up everything now I like to pause the game whenever I start giving orders now you want to go over to this menu right over here, click Utilities, Carpenter's Bench, which is the very first item you should always build, and you want to hold Shift and click two spaces within the carpentry. That'll mean that means that two people are going to create carpentry benches and bring them to right here and place them down in the carpentry. Now you unpause, wait for somebody to build them, and as soon as they build them, you want to go back into this menu and click wood detailer and do the same exact thing uh, and put two spaces down as soon as they build it see now they're coming along with those and as soon as one goes down I can click space and give out the order to also make the wood detailers which is needed to create the masons bench which goes in the masonry I like to always start out with two of each so that my people can build a little bit faster because only one person can activate can be at and using each uh, little item at one any one time and as soon as they're um, about done moving everything I will go ahead and give them an order to till a land to so start a, a basic farm now as soon as your people finally finish building 
carpentries, you can go ahead and build a mason's bench. You can, if you want, if you're impatient like me, increase the speed so that they go a little bit faster. But always be careful of doing this because if you let it go too long with increased speed, uh, you can advance the game farther than you want to and end up getting sieged and have all your people killed. I'll talk about sieges in another video as well. That's a later game thing. This is just beginning basics. Now, as soon as they, well, I'll fast forward again for the sakes of the video. I usually don't fast forward to this part just because it's risky. As soon as they build Mason's benches, I like to pause the game again. Uh, no, not that menu. Go to this bottom menu, click the till key, and till out. If you have 11 people, you want to make sure that you have at least 11 spaces within this block, but I only have nine. So that's the limit, that's the minimum I can put down to be able to feed everybody sufficiently. I'm going to go ahead and add in a bit just because. Also, go back into this, click zones, and choose bakery, and set down a 3x3 three three area. It doesn't have to be next to each other, it can be anywhere. But then after that, go back into utilities over here, choose baker's table, and put down two in the bakery, as well as choose baker's oven, and put them down in the bakery. Always remember to hold shift so you don't have to go back into this menu and click two. And you want to go ahead and put down two of each in there. Now I'll, un I'll unpause, wait for, I'll fast forward to wait for them to till. They'll slowly till all of this land as well as build the, there'll be some people building. Now as soon as everything's built, I'll stop fast forwarding and I'll show you how to plant a field of wheat. Also, as, also, now that it's all built, I'm going to pause. I'll go ahead and lower the fast forward speed so that it's not crazy when I unpause it. You want to choose the mill. You want to have at least two. I, I like having at least two. It makes it pretty fast. You can Mills create flowers, which will then be taken to make bread. Uh, we'll be using this menu to do that, uh, but I'll explain that in a little while. Now, you want to go to this menu, to the main menu, and click planting, and click plant wheat. Then choose all of the tilled land that you just tilled, and give the order to plant. Now, for planting wild wheat, and for most uh, wild plants, you'll have to manually harvest a bunch of different ones, and they'll turn them into seeds and bring them over here. So I like to, while the game's paused, go ahead and choose a bunch of wild wheat that are near. Don't choose ones that are too far away, or you might get attacked. You want to choose ones that are near? I have a lot near, luckily. Mm -hmm. So, I keep getting texts. But you want to choose a bunch? You can check on hills, like there's one on a hill, right there. Harvest that, no more on that hill. Harvest, harvest. That should be plenty to fill up almost all of this land, I do believe. Now I'll unpause, they'll start building. We'll go ahead and fast forward it. See, as you can see, they're harvesting, and they'll eventually come over and turn them into seeds and bring them over to this area right here. See, there's one wheat seedling. They'll eventually come over. I just don't want to fast forward too long. I'll go ahead and harvest this. And now, I'm going to stop fast forwarding as much. And now... They, they've harvested everything, and you have almost a full field. I might actually have a full field. Yeah, I have a full field. Now, go ahead and pause it as soon as everybody's done. Mine's not done, done, but I can deal with it. You want to go into this right menu. Click on Food up at the top, Gathering. Now, this menu right here is very, ooh, a very good menu. Uh, this, this right the tutorial is very bad at explaining everything, but I'll explain it well. These two buttons bring you to further menus with more items and stuff. But right now, this is what we're looking at, this flower right here. This means whenever I move this up, that means now I'll set it to five. Well, I'll set it to the amount of, w amount of people that I have plus one. That means that they will always make 
they will always try and make 10. So if they ever go below having 10 flour, they'll continue making flour until they have 10. This right here just says, I want you to make six. That's like an order to make six. Just keep that below and add and add one to the amount of people you have and have that. Now go into trees and plants and do the same with wheat, harvest wheat. That'll mean they'll, now they'll harvest until they have 10 wheat and then they'll turn that wheat into flour until they have 10 flour. And they'll do that constantly. Now go back into the men menu of this right here. Well, you don't have to go all the way back to here, just back to this area. Click baking, find bread, not banana bread, but bread, and do the same. Select one plus the amount of people you have. And now they should, whenever the wheat begins to grow, they should ha begin making bread for themselves. I'll unpause it, fast forward until they start making bread. Now, I'll explain that in a later video, happiness and everything. But after you have this, after they start making bread, which will be soon, as soon as this starts growing. And uh, I'll explain this menu a little bit more while I wait. You can click this button right here. That'll mean no matter where you go, it will always stay open. You can do that with each of these menus. Sometimes I like playing with them on each open just because it makes it a little bit easier. But most of the time I play with them off. Just give me more of a viewing room. And this priorities panel right here, I'll explain that while I wait for them to do that. This sets baking and cooking should always be first. Always keep that as first. That will mean that they will bake and they will make food for themselves over doing everything else. They will make food for themselves before, like building, buildings, hauling items, trading, feeding, item construction, and all that stuff. I also enjoy. I personally see now they're make now now the wheat's growing. I like having hauling up close to gathering and harvesting. You see now he's making bread, and somebody's dying. Who just died? Really, who just died? That makes me really angry. A froggy. Froggies are right here. And <sighs> froggies are mm, mm, make me angry. But they're the dudes who spawn in the jungle and occasionally spawn randomly around the map. But you see now they have bread and they're going to live. To live. Now in episode number two, which I'll link after this. I'll put it in the description as well. We'll describe a little bit more advanced building buildings, building roofs, and building second floors, as well as uh, uh, dealing with uh, early on enemies and creating a more solid food. More solid food so that your people won't have to eat as often because bread doesn't fill them up completely. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos. And have fun, I guess. Playing Towns. It's a great game. I love it. Stay tuned for episode two. Bye.